Hello audience, this is Dennis Sietzma, Homestead, Florida, USA. It is Dennis John Sietzma Productions. Uh, it's August 2nd, 2024. And I'm working on this 1994 Chevy Astro van that I've owned since it was new in 1994. Uh, <clears throat> as people who have been watching my video series, um, I've owned this van since it was new and I put it in a Jorge's body shop in Homestead, Florida in 2017 to fix a leak over the windshield. And I've been trying to get it back into the shop because the windshield is still leaking even after I paid them to do that work. And they did do some patches. There were holes on either side uh, above the windshield and they did some good patchwork but that where the glass meets uh, I told them to use uh, USC all metal and the shop didn't do that they used regular filler so the windshield still leaking now I did um, try to find and solve a problem with the engine seeking at idle and uh, so this was in and out of the body shop in 2017 and I changed just about every sensor I could including the distributor uh, to solve the engine seeking problem and I ended up it culminated with the fuel pump uh, didn't have enough volume or pressure so replaced that uh, with a Delphi fuel sender and pump as one unit and also did the fuel injection. Now the fuel injection on this 94 Astro van's uh, hard to come by because it was only used from 1992 to 95. This CPI central port injection and then after 95 they went to sequential fuel injection CSFI and then after that 2002 I'm not sure what they did but um, <clears throat> so it's hard to get the fuel injection module so I found I was able to get one refurbished through GB remanufacturing by contacting Rock Auto and I was I've now got one good one and two spares all three have been through the GB remanufacturing process because to convert this to fuel injection with something like a Holly Sniper 2 you'd need the manifold, you'd need the fuel injection, you'd need to change probably the fuel pump in the tank and you'd need the adapter for the computer uh, to make the sniper work with the 4L60E transmission. Now the 4L60E transmission came out in 93 and they the first version of it and they've been making the 4L60E for years now so you can get parts for it but um, the original version um, is really hard to come by a core now uh, so anyway uh, I finally got all the problems with this thing sorted for daily driver use or so I thought when I developed a rod knock an engine noise that I didn't know what it was and you know I should have tested differently I should have taken all the plugs out and rocked the crankshaft to check for a problem with the connecting rod and it turned out number six had a bad bearing uh, where the connecting rod meets the crankshaft and it damaged the crankshaft so once I discovered all this, and prior to that I had done the brakes all the way around, uh, I had done the master cylinder, I had replaced one of the rusted out brake lines on the right front. Seems like the right front brake line rusts out on this year and the other years of Astrovan where it goes underneath the cross member. So anyway, I did all that work and also the door handle broke on the driver's side and I replaced that and the pins the brass pins on the fuse block broke uh, for the ECM one and I haven't quite finished the repair on that but um, 
the power window, PWRWDEO, that pin also broke. So I had no power windows and no power to the 4L60E transmission. So um, I thought I had a transmission problem, but it's probably that. Anyway, I fixed the, the fuse block pin. I found out I was able to extract it and get replacement pin from Speedway Motors and also uh, Dorman sells uh, ATC fuse block kit that has the pins in it and when I added this into a video production I'll give you part numbers on everything that I had to research and order and obtain for this project but when I found the spun the crankshaft damage I said oh my now what so I went to a couple local machine shops and I talked to them or called them about repairing the engine and then I considered uh, getting another engine somewhere from a salvage yard what have you and finally because of a number of reasons I decided to go with a remanufactured engine from powertrain products that they said would be available in six weeks well it's been two, two, 12 weeks now and delivery is supposed to be today. Well, one of the problems I ran into too with this lift is it fractured the weld here. And so I contacted VE, VOR, Velor, and they sent me a whole nother lift. So um, before I get the engine I need to swap out this part here and eventually I don't know what I'm gonna do uh, but I'll end up with two lifts and I'll probably take the that part to a local welder and maybe have some a doubler put on there or something to make it more substantial than the way it comes from the factory but in any event uh, valve lore you know they were good on their warranty so that's that now as far as why am I doing all this I bought the van new I like it because it's got the factory towing package and that's number one I like it number two is very utilitarian it carries a lot of cargo uh, such as fishing equipment or scuba diving plus it's rated to tow 5,000 pounds but I've got some problems I need to solve. I've improved the electrical system by adding a relay to take the load off the A contact on the ignition switch that likes to burn out on these. Uh, but when I took it to Jorge's shop, I didn't communicate well that they had to paint the inside where the rust damage was. So uh, I'm going to have to deal with this probably myself. I've taken it to other shops and they want uh, crazy money to deal with the rust problems and repainting it again. And uh, uh, You know, I've, I've boogered it up with a little flex paste to try to keep it from leaking. And of course the battery failed uh, recently. Uh, like January of this year and I changed the master cylinder out and I repaired the uh, the uh, uh, hydro boost it had a leaking seal took that all apart took me three times before I got that right because the seal I didn't have the right size seal I had the AC working uh, but I had to take this apart to get the engine out and I'm ready to yank the engine and put it in a box and send that back to powertrain. And I hate to give that block up because it's a virgin block. And it doesn't have any wear on the cylinders. I mean, the original factory crosshatch is still there on all six cylinders and there's no ridge. So I hate to give up that. And, of course, I put new tires on it because you're supposed to keep putting tires on stuff that's over eight years old. And I hope to get this back into Jorge's shop 
for a respray after I fix the rust damage. And I got a glass guy in Homestead who says he'll come out and take the windshield out for me. And I can do the repair work myself. And then oh, um, the metal work. And then uh, at that point I can put the glass back in it. Uh, and then later maybe uh, run it through the body shop. But because of the age of this, this is a 30 year old van and uh, it's really hard to get these uh, these moldings anymore uh, unless you get them from a salvage yard. And it took me uh, almost a year to find that piece on the back that was dented and the rest of it's pretty well deteriorated so I guess if I had to do this again I'd take those moldings off altogether and just said you know and use it without any problem like that and uh, like I say it tows up to 5,000 pounds and I've got it wired this came with a factory tow package and I've got it wired for a 7 pin tow connector and uh, Uh, the top of the van uh, needs painting and I got some places where I had rust holes so again more metal work that has to be done on the top but uh, the reason why restoring these old vans and, and station wagons are that they, 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 they don't exist anymore you got to buy a crossover and then once you get a crossover, you find, oh, it doesn't tow anything. Oh, 1,500 pounds towing capacity, or 500 pounds towing capacity with those modern transmissions. Uh, so, most of the station wagons are gone, are going for a price, and used vans, um, you know, stuff that's utilitarian is getting... You know, you end up having to buy uh, an, an economy car to get to and from work, and then you got to buy a crossover for family needs. Uh, and my wife likes her her Honda CRV, and then you need a pickup truck or a van to do any towing. So, you know, they're forcing the American families to to do uh, three vehicles. And with the uncertain politics in this country, uh, I don't know what's going to happen with inflation, but I don't expect it to go down. And uh, people are having to go into savings just to survive. So I don't know where that's going to go. Uh, once the savings are gone, your TSP, your retirement savings, because you have to keep up with the cost of living. But anyway, there's a lot of good reason for wanting to keep an older vehicle. And even though this has been a disaster uh, for me, I am carrying on. And the reason, another reason I went with the reman engine is I just don't have the time. I could do this work myself or with the machine shop's help or what have you. But I just don't have the time. And I watch all these projects on TV on the car shows where somebody starts a project and then they have a health issue and they it stays tore apart like this so I want to get it back together again and driving as quickly as I can and uh, so anyway thanks for watching uh, give me a thumbs up if there's any good information in this video uh, I'll be doing other segments once the engine arrives but this is the introduction segment for August 2nd 2024 which is a Friday and uh, I really don't know what caused that bearing to fail um, I don't know but the oil pressure you know first the engine was seeking and then the oil pressure was fluctuating and then the oil pressure went to zero and while I was working on it uh, I tested the oil pump or tried to with the uh, upper plenum like I said, it's got a funky injection system, a CPI from 92 to 95. 
and uh, it looked like the oil pressure came back after I rotated it through for a little while uh, and I found a screw from the distributor cap in the oil pan so I don't know if that lodged into the oil pump or if that you know and when I was working on the fuel injection uh, I made a mistake I double o-ringed the uh, fuel rails uh, the HK11 uh, those are good to replace those every time you work on the fuel injection because uh, those fracture and leak and they're good to replace those from time to time but I had accidentally double o-ringed it on the pressure side and that flooded the lower plenum with gasoline and uh, how that would cause number six to have a connecting rod failure is beyond me I don't think it can because the the gasoline leak holes are for cylinders number uh, uh, let's see one what is it two and five it's the middle cylinders on both banks left and right banks the middle cylinders there's weep holes in the lower plenum assembly that lets the gasoline if any is pooled in there go into the cylinders and that can cause uh, hydrostatic, hydrostatic lock uh, with gasoline and there were no coolant leaks uh, there was no water in the cylinders and I did everything I could think of if you look at my past videos you'll see I went through all kinds of testing and diagnostics and what have you but I still ended up with this result and I don't know why and I don't know why it took so long uh, for powertrain products to get me another engine but I hope that all goes well and this is a video diary not a how-to do-it-yourself work can be dangerous can cause loss of life or significant injury so do it at your own risk uh, I'm a do-it-yourself enthusiast because uh, I like doing work myself I guess and I thought I had dropped a bolt into the exhaust so I pulled that because I wanted to get that make sure it's not stuck in the catalytic but I can't find the bolt even with it loose and jiggling it and all that upside down I can't find the bolt that I think came out of the exhaust manifold on the left bank so anyway sorry for talking so long but I'm trying to bring people that don't know my video series on YouTube uh, for this project don't know about it um, and I appreciate if you're watching. Oh, by the way, I'm not being paid for these videos, if you watch my videos. Uh, these are mainly for other Astrovan enthusiasts or people that want to, are thinking of getting a vehicle and fixing it up. Uh, you're, I'm at, I have an advantage. I know the history of this vehicle because I kept all my receipts and I've owned it since new. So... Uh, that's a plus when you know a vehicle's history if you buy anything used that as a but anyway this is a lot of work and I put way too much time in this uh, than I wanted to just trying to get it back to daily driver status is my objective here not a full restore but uh, every time I fixed one thing another thing became a problem and I had to sort it and uh, that problem with the fuse block was was really uh, really a pain because uh, you know and changing this lock assembly out in the door handle was a pain and let's see I think I got one wire here I got to reconnect to get the ECM1 it's pins ready to stick in there and then the fuse will work uh, on that so uh, people give me a thumbs up if anything's of value I'm not being paid for this until I have over 4,000 subscribers and I've got only like 350 but I appreciate anybody that gives me a thumbs up and thanks for watching all right it's 10 a.m. August 2nd 2024 and I got the the old engine 
ready to be put in a box taken back but I got to put the pistons in it and reassemble it because powertrain product says it has to be reassembled and I'm like oh man so but the damage to the crank wasn't really all that bad on number six but I did see some visible scratches they say if you can run your nail over it and feel it then then that's a problem but why number six if I had made a mistake with the fuel injection it flows into this cylinder and to that cylinder so maybe it just wore out uh, and the engine seeking was a clue that the bearings were going but uh, anyway I got to run the the hone through here and put the pistons back in so I got to get a piston compressor I was trying to avoid buying all these engine rebuild tools but um, you know the situation is such as it is and I thought I had a couple of bolts on here on the front I needed to take off maybe I took them off already and watch for these dowel pins and I never release a core until the job's done uh-uh never ever give them back the core until the job's done well I guess it was on the back here there's a plug there and a bolt there and some other stuff on the back anyway never give them your core back even if you gotta pay for it because if you give them your core back it takes away your options of if it's the wrong engine or there's a problem with it or whatever and there's a five-year warranty it comes with a three-year I bought the five-year warranty because I get five years out of it I figure I'm good and the seven-year was so expensive that I decided not to but anyway I got the got the arm swapped out here and I'll take the other arm that's got the failed it failed weld on it I'll take that to the local welder and get that get that fixed and it's hard to even see the crack but it's there yeah, okay that's because all right cause the crack is on this side okay. you can see the air through it and that weld holds the piston so it's really an important weld it's a bad failure point to have and I had to put an extension bar on here to reach the back I got this 40 inch square 2 inch stock off Amazon for like 60 bucks I should have gone to a local place but again time 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 tick 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 I just don't have the time and like I say I got all the other problems sorted I think so once I get this all back together and running and I have to make new transmission lines um, if the engine doesn't get delivered today I'll work on that and uh, I gotta fabricate this line here from the hard line failed from here to the condenser and yes I have a part number and yes it's available for like 20 bucks online and the core I found is available from AutoZone they only use this core for like two years so if you got an older van you want to stock up on the hard to get parts while you can still get them and I'll work on this ABS later I think all I have to do is resolder the uh, the control board cold solder joints uh, again audience uh, give me a thumbs up if there's anything good in here thanks again for watching oh and I failed to mention we're expecting a tropical system tomorrow and it's supposed to rain all day Saturday uh, the third so I probably won't be working at all on the third but like I said I've done all these things to this van and I hope I can get the the windshield leak fixed and we got rust here too I gotta address I gotta fabricate these things and I don't know how to do it but I took auto body repair at Robert Morgan Votech back in the 80s so I know a little bit and what I can't get done I may have to have it hauled to the body shop and with the windshield out and say hey how much to just just fix the metal and then I'll deal with the rest later I gotta get this thing going again so any body shops in Florida willing to help me please email me call me you go to my Facebook Dennis Seatsma S-Y-T-S-M-A and get my 
phone number and email and all that. So, thanks for watching.